consumer graphics cards are in a pretty bad place right now. You have Nvidia selling overpriced cards because they're so dominant, AMD kind of abandoning both the high and low end markets, and then there's Intel. Intel had a pretty bad 2024. Bad enough there are acquisition rumors flying around. Their GPU division had a bumpy start with the A-series cards and they really didn't make much of a splash. But they kept improving bit by bit and finally launched Battle Mage cards starting with a B580. A lot of people said this is the first truly mid-range graphics card in years. I'm not going to talk about the B580's relative performance. I'm not even going to benchmark it. I plugged it into a Raspberry Pi to see if I could get it working. Why? Because that's what I do. And before you ask, yes, the Raspberry Pi has resizable bar support. Sort of. We'll get to that. And of course, not everything's working, but we're seeing progress. We already have a bunch of AMD GPUs tested and almost fully functional. There's gaming in 4K now, video transcoding, LLMs, everything's working pretty well, though the setups that I have are a little janky. And the 9070 launch is right around the corner, so will that work? Probably, but it might need a little driver tweaking like we had to do with the 7000 series. We'll see, and if I can get my hands on one of those cards someday, I'll definitely test it out. Before we get to the Intel GPUs, I wanted to switch gears and talk about Nvidia a little bit too. I have like 10 different Nvidia cards now, and none of them so far have gotten working on the Pi, even though a lot of them, in fact, I think all of them now, except for the earliest, uh, like four or five generation old one that I had, a Quadro, work on the Ampere Ultra systems. Every time that I get these things running, either with the proprietary driver or the open source driver, or even Nuvo, uh, I get uh, failure messages. And on the NVIDIA drivers, it's always this RM init adapter failed message. And that just happens no matter what. There's not much more debugging data that I can get out of it. And uh, this isn't just on the Raspberry Pi either. The, on Ampere it works, but on other ARM systems it doesn't. So my guess is that there's a few like special cases in the, the driver code that are probably set just for Ampere servers. And they might work on other ARM systems, but they're not validated there, so they have them you know, only working on Ampere. I don't know. The cool thing is that NVIDIA did open source their drivers a few years back. Not everything is out there in the open, but a lot of it is. A lot of things that will help us debug this. And uh, one of the main open source driver developers from NVIDIA actually responded to one of my requests on the NVIDIA open driver repo. So long term, I'm optimistic we might get some NVIDIA cards working on the Pi. And that brings me to Intel. They have pretty much the cheapest cards for the, the price to performance that you can get right now. And uh, especially if you're just doing light gaming or, you know, I, I showed playing Portal in 4K on a Raspberry Pi. Like if you can get a cheap GPU that's pretty new with support for newer codecs for video transcoding and stuff, that'd be awesome. And uh, I had an A750 because they finally were in stock after the initial launch, uh, but we had no, no ability to get that working on the Pi for a while. And I had kind of shelved it because I was like, eh, nobody, you know, there's, these cards are not that popular anyway. Uh, but then the B580 launched and uh, they were out of stock for a long while and they're still kind of hard to get right now. Uh, but a friend in St. Charles here in St. Louis found one when he went to Micro Center one day and uh, he bought it and he gave it to me for my testing. So thank you very much to him. I'll actually be covering one of his other projects on the main channel pretty soon, probably in the next month or two. Getting back to the A750, uh, they both use open source drivers, but the A750 used the I915 driver, I think it was, and the, uh, the B580 uses the ZXE drivers. We have some patches for the A750 now. Some other people worked on this stuff more than I did. I, I just basically saw it and applied it and and then kind of refined it and, and aggregated it. But uh, the patches work on a lot of ARM systems, not just on the Raspberry Pi. And we can get the console working reliably, which, you know, that's, that's great, but it's not a graphical interface and it's certainly not 3D gaming. Uh, but the driver does say that resizable bar support isn't working. And we'll, we'll get to that a little bit more too. Um, I could get GL Mark II to output graphics through the GPU, but it was using LLVM pipe. Mean, meaning that the rendering was actually happening on the CPU and not the GPU. It definitely sees the card, and you can also see that screen fetch is seeing that it's being used. But to get graphics support working, I had to compile a newer version of Mesa, which is kind of the graphics library for everything, and that takes a little time on the Pi. But with that, I could get booted to the desktop. <laughs> but as you can see here, things are a little bit off. We have desktop um, with some artifacts which uh, do some funny things if I go up here uh, you know there's a little 
A little oddity going on. Oh boy, uh, it's really it's really struggling here. Look at that. I, even these uh, these fans. When I do this, see that they're just they're like, yeah, I want to try. I mean, it's really trying. It's it struggles, but it's trying. And I can even play YouTube videos, except I, I think that this card might be set into like rave mode. And outside YouTube, GLX Gears actually works, but it glitches a lot. It's definitely not usable, but it, just getting any graphics support means that it's probably just some memory bugs that we're, we're needing to iron out. So switching tracks to the B580, I uh, plugged that in, and the first time I got it going, I actually got a blinking cursor. And you might not think that's very impressive. It, it doesn't look like much, but... It took us more than two years to get to that point on the Compute Module 4 with its broken PCI Express bus. So the fact that we have a blinking cursor means we can go a lot further now. Uh, but this card uses the Z driver instead of the older i915 drivers. And that should make it more functional. Uh, but the problem is that Intel, I don't think that they had ARM support as a major priority in their, in their software development. I wonder why, maybe because they build an x86 competing processor architecture. Uh, but at least someday we might be able to get that patch working on Z. I have instructions for everything that you'll, you'll need to do besides getting that patch running. Uh, you'll need to install Intel's Z firmware because the current version of Raspberry Pi OS um, and the, the firmware libraries don't include it by default. And for now, uh, for both cards, you actually have to disable the Pi's internal GPU. Otherwise, it kind of takes things over and Mesa gets confused. So we still can't get the GUI running, and we're trying to figure out right now why the Raspberry Pi's resizable bar support, which should be working and it's configured to work, why that's not being recognized by the Intel drivers either. And we have the attention of the Raspberry Pi firmware and uh, Linux developers, so they've been very helpful along this journey. And I, I think that we all see that it could be cool to be able to pop any graphics card onto a Raspberry Pi. Like, let's say you have an old gaming PC and you want to get some more use out of the hardware inside of it. It'd be nice if you could take a $50 Raspberry Pi and, and pop a graphics card on it, use it as a transcoding server, or use it to run a, a large language model like DeepSeek or Llama or something like that. So I think the future is bright here. The description has links to the issues for all the cards I'm testing, and like I said, we have most AMD features working great out of the box. There's a small chance we might upstream some patches into either Linux directly someday, or at least Raspberry Pi's fork. I didn't make this a main channel video just because I didn't have time to really script everything out, but if we have any breakthroughs, I might do that. And to AMD, Nvidia, and Intel, please, if you have anyone with some spare cycles to help, I know the Pi community and ARM PC builders in general would love a little support.